Infernal greetings, infernal blessings to all. Brother Ravana Noon back again, discussing various topics, more so the understanding that you as your own God, as your own daemon or demon, <clears throat> you possess the power to create and sustain your own life. However, what has been done to the masses is to convince them that they need some external source or force to assist them in every endeavor in their life. That weakens your power and potential because you actually possess every trait, quality, or attribute at your disposal for your own transformation to become the most powerful person you can be. But in order to do that, you have to start to really understand a Luciferian principle. And that is, if you don't take care of yourself, no one else will. There is no God, no Allah, no Yahweh, no Batala, no Yamaya, no Oshun, no Oya. None of them are going to do anything for you. Because as a God in your own right, why would you need the assistance of other gods? One. Two, gods that you created as a part of the collective unconscious. And three, why would you give your power away to something outside of yourself that has never benefited you? Now, people are going to find a way to still worship gods, God, Allah, Yahweh, Jehovah, Elohim, El Elo, Adonai, El Rab, so on and so forth. They will always find a way to worship something outside of themselves because it's human weakness, human frailties that allows you to think that you can't conquer them and overcome them. So you cry out to something outside of yourself to help you. That shows how weak we can be as a people and never focus on how strong we can be as well. To realize you've created your existence, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or beautiful, based upon your perception, because good and evil, or right and wrong, all these things are human constructs, usually programmed into you from family, religion, society, things of that nature. And as long as you look at life through someone else's lenses, someone else's point of view or perception, you'll always be enslaved by those very paradigms that were given to you. I don't care if it's African tradition. As a person of African descent, I have practiced African traditions, things of that nature, but African traditions in its very origin is communal and it's belief in external things, whether it's an external force. Some have a little more knowledge and understand that the Orisha can represent more like an external force, a force in nature or things of that nature. Regardless, it's still outside of yourself. 
and they don't learn or know how to or are afraid to tap into that potential within themselves. So they forever reach and constantly reach and reach and reach and reach and reach. for something to save them, to help them, to answer their prayers. You've always had your prayers answered, but it wasn't from an external force or source. Your prayers were answered by yourself through the power of your mind and then by taking action in the physical. Well, the problem is we don't want to accept that but we'd rather accept something that you've never seen or can't prove. And then there will be some who will say, well, I've seen Jesus, great. Which depiction of Jesus did you see? Usually that was programmed into you a long time ago from thousands of different variations of depictions of a so-called Christ figure that existed over 2000 years ago or so. But even if you claim you saw that, I can't co-sign that for you. I wasn't there. I can't verify for you because that's in your subjective realm. That has nothing to do with me. That's your subjective realm. That's your personal work. Your personal understanding of what you think you saw or your mind created for you to see. Now, people will say, well, I've seen Kali. You may have. But the depictions you've seen of Kali for the last 10 years, let's say, you might have created a new depiction based on those depictions. And then your mind, from your unconscious to your subconscious mind, projects that image outward to you in a ritual, let's say, and you see a, a entity or being or figure, and you will claim, I saw Kali. No, I was still a projection from your mind because it all begins in your mind. And it all ends in your mind. Your mind is projecting it outward. Your mind can project these things outward, create them into objects or entities for you because that's possibly what you need to feel better about yourself at the end of the day. Big problem is you're creating it. So if you can create and project something outside of you, what can you possibly do if you take the journey inward and activate all your full potential? But in order to activate your full potential, you must first deal with the very things you ignore about yourself. That you may possibly possibly be the worst person when it comes to social interactions. You may be the worst parent ever. You may be the most ferocious, road rage having individual possible. It is what it is. But on this path, the left hand path, we don't stop there. And once you identify these things, we do not stop there. We then go beyond the identification to see when they first began. And then we confront those aspects of ourselves. And we either transmute it into a strength, and if it's not able to be transmuted, devour it or destroy it. Stop enabling your weaknesses, your vices. Stop enabling all of the things that you make excuses about. Stop enabling it and stop being around people that enable you to continue that path. Confront and face that reality about yourself and become a master over yourself. But the problem is, if you constantly put your 
power in the hands of others or expect something outside of you to do it, then how different of a Christian are you? I'm talking to you, 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 and you on the left-hand path who claim to be so left-hand path, but still believe that there's gods and goddesses. Still accept that something outside of you is doing the work. For that, you should still be a Christian because it makes no difference because you're still you're still doing the same con you're still basically practicing the same concepts of Christianity. You just think you're doing it differently because it's a little darker or seems to be in reverse of what they do. No, it's still the same thing. But if you're theistic, atheistic, that's all personal choice. It's all in your personal belief. But if I'm walking the left-hand path, and from my understanding of walking this path for many years now, this path is about achieving individuated consciousness in making yourself the most powerful person to be the god or the demon or daemon, however you want to view it, over your life, then why would I still give my power away to external beings? Why? Why, why, why? Why would I do that? Well, that's the question you have to ask yourself. If you really feel that this left-hand path is for you, then you might need to take inventory about, about the things you still believe in. Are you still giving your power away and why so? Do you still believe in fairies? This cupcake bullshit that people bring, bring into this left-hand path. I never understood it, but hey, that's what people do. If you still want to walk around hugging trees, you might need to stay away from them. I'm not dealing with that fluffy stuff. From here on out, as I've been telling people, it's only going to get more intense. The work is only going to get deeper and stronger. Stronger in a sense that you're going to experience more of your own BS, experience the things you ignore or avoid about yourself, experience the very depths of your abyss. The abyss is a place of the deepest level of your subconscious mind where the most primal parts of you reside at. And through the abyss, you could eventually enter the void. But you have to be willing to put the BS to the side and say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna work this. I'm gonna work this and trust myself that I have the power and the ability to become greater than I have ever imagined. That I have always had that potential within me, but now, 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 I'm learning how to really tap into that potential. These rituals are opening me up. They're bringing things to the surface. And there's things that I must do about them. What good is it to have things rise up? Most, the most very things rise up in your ritual and then you take no action in the physical. For that, why even rise it up to then suppress it again? Again, this is what sometimes happens. The Luciferian understanding is in order to experience what would be considered the true light, the intellect, you must first experience your true self, which is the dominant force in this universe, which is the darkness. Oh, fluffy light loving fools are going to argue against that but science has proven that and even certain ancient concepts have showed that most everything in existence or life emanated or germinated 
from the dark chaotic water, waters like in Kemet, which is noon, the dark primeval chaotic waters, noon, and then the female counterpart, Nunet, because in Kemet, they believe that both are exceptionally important and equal in bringing true so-called integration or balance, not one or the other. So even in Kemet, they have that. In Sumeria, they had the primal chaotic waters in the womb of the dragon through Tiamat, where life was created through. You could go on and on and find this across many different myths throughout different civilizations and cultures. This is your origin point is in darkness. But people clamor, create, and fight wars over the light. They go fight the whole world to suppress what they consider darkness, evil, wrong, and never understand why they're truly doing it. For one, most of the time they're doing it because they're brainwashed. For two, if they really understood the power of darkness, they would not be doing it. They would understand that darkness within themselves. And through that journey, you become even more powerful. But again, people's shortcomings does, don't, does not allow them to elevate past that. It is always something that holds individuals back. Death scares people. And then you have some people so, who are so conscious, they swear they have answers about what happens after death. Please stop it. Cut it out. Nonsense. And if you people co-sign that BS, you deserve to be royally done up the culo without grease. Royally done that way. Because you guys believe anything people say sometimes because you want to be entertained. You want to feel special and important. You want to feel wonderful. You want to feel this or that. But what you fail to do is look at yourself and see how treacherous you can be, how treacherous our people can be, how rageful and angry and hurtful and harmful we can be as a person or as a people. We want to fluff everything up and look at ourselves as, as if we're holy roly. Stop it. People, life in itself is not like that. Nature in itself is not fluffy. There's a very dark side of nature that people refuse to look at because they want to glorify and make everything so sweet and nice. Those people are far gone mentally. They do not understand life. They're so spooked out. They're so spiritual that they have no understanding of the dark side of life and how it can be used to empower yourself. I remember going to spiritual groups years ago, walking in, and it was like you were walking into some fake-ass spiritual guru meeting where everybody's like, Peace, brother. Peace, Aki. Hotep, brother. Hotep, sister. Yes, sister. Yes, Hotep. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, sister. Look at that dress. I'm feeling that goddess. Cut that bullshit out, yo. Please. Oh, I get nauseous even thinking about that stuff. Disgusted. I get disgusted to think about how many years I spent in bullshit like that. But some people need it. A lot of the people who need it are those who are mostly afraid of themselves, mostly have treacherous sides, and they try to mask it by being super fluffy, spiritual, and light side. Those are the people that need the dark side the most, but they, they run from it. So they all deep and spooky and fluffy because that's how they mask that they that's how they mask their darkness by being fake 
to themselves. Understanding the concept of the dragon. It's not a dragon per se as a mythological creature. It's a force of energy, a current of energy that is the most primal energy you can find within this planet. That's more so what the draconian current is as opposed to some dragon creature that people want to worship again. I want to pet or I want to fly in the back of, come on people, just Jesus. I can't, I just, I just, just cannot get it. I just don't get it, but it's not for me to get. So, awaken to your true power and potential. Stop running, people. As there's so many people that run from themselves. It's not even funny, yo. I mean, like, straight up. They run from themselves, and it's not even funny. They begin a task, and they never finish. That is a bad habit. To really excel on this path, you must have discipline. Now, I know I've heard people before say, oh, they really don't, you know, uh, you know, are not that disciplined. They just let things flow. Okay, I feel is that. You let things flow, but letting things flow can sometimes lead to lackadaisical, lazy behavior because you're going to wait for the thing to constantly flow. And what about if it doesn't? Well, on this path, you're creating, you're creating your experiences so that you can gain wisdom through those experiences. You're not waiting or letting shit flow through your discipline, through constant, consistent practice, consistent studying, consistent work on yourself. You create experiences necessary that you need in order to, let's say, graduate to another experience that helps you in your overall wisdom. But sitting there waiting is not going to accomplish anything. And people make that mistake quite often. It's about consistency. Running when you just started to get to a level that you're opening up to yourself, leaving the work behind or lessening the work instead of continue, continuing the work level, it's a disservice to yourself. But I'm not here to do work for people. You have to decide that's what you really want to do. And if that's what you really want to do, you will do it. Being that said, uh, announcement, Luciferian class, the ninth Luciferian class is this Saturday. And we will be going further into the seven gates of hell or the seven underworlds or the seven gates of the underworld. And also discussing the masks of Lucifer, the different and various masks that Lucifer wears. So you could get a greater understanding of these various archetypal mass or deific mass that Lucifer wears and find which ones resonate with you so you could utilize within your personal work. We're going to go more in depth into that for several classes because it's important that we understand these deific mass and how each of those mass can really relate to you as an individual. So class will be this Saturday for those in the Luciferian class on Patreon at 8 p.m. Check your account because if you're not able to get the email or the message that we're having class Saturday and you don't want to miss it, check your account. That's all I'm going to tell you. Um, just make sure everything's straight so that you can then see the posting or receive an email that it's happening Saturday at 8 o'clock. You don't want to miss it. This class is going to be very good. A journey of the black at the conference, beautiful conference, many beautiful people there. But now it's time to get back to work and keep some of that energy and theme from the journey of the black at the conference back into this work. 
So this Saturday, we're having a class. Don't miss it. All right. Don't miss it. If you're really working and growing and transforming through this loose fair and current, don't miss it. Be there. All right. Uh, besides that, the vampiric class. It's on Patreon for those who want to go through the first you know, the first months, I mean, two months or so of the vampiric class, two, three months to catch up before we activate it in the new year, it's on Patreon. Vampirism isn't just about feeding or devouring energy. It's learning how to devour and destroy your weaknesses, frailties, issues, and things of that nature too. And utilizing the vampiric magical system to accomplish that task that's the greatest part of the work besides just feeding, but feeding is going to be a part that is also important. So if this is something you really want to understand, get on Patreon, the eternal black flame and join the vampire magic class. It will help you out. Uh, well, once people start joining that, I'll start having video I mean, classes with them. Um, and posting the work, the homework, and everything that uh, we did in the first few months for the first vampiric class. And then when y'all catch up, then I'm going to bring the other individuals that were there, and we're going to take off from there. So that's in there. Um, beginning in the new year, probably in January, middle of January, a new class. You don't want to miss this class as well. Okay? Journey of the journey through the clip path journey through the clip path going deeper into the clip path opening the tunnels of set walking through the tunnels of set and understanding the various demonic forces and how they relate to your transformation we're going deep into that at the beginning of the new year so stay tuned for that as well so once again, the Luciferian class is Saturday, 8 p.m. Uh, for May Patreon members of the Black Flame of Lucifer membership tier level. You can still join the Luciferian class. We still have some time to go before we finish. So if you still really feel that Luciferian, Luciferian current, want to learn more, by all means, join the Luciferian class. Now is the time to do it so that you could be in class by Saturday. And now all the work is there, all the homework, all the videos, so you can easily catch up, all right? But it's you want to definitely take care of everything by sat this Saturday because class is this Saturday at 8 p.m. All right, my people's infernal blessings to all. It's wonderful to see y'all, but it's time to walk that dark path and master them, master yourself. All right.